twice. Strong as a boar. The best man in ice I ever met. I was studying the ship. Oh, yeah. The Fram. There is beauty. You did Norway proud this evening, Captain. Great powers always find a little modesty quite becoming in small ones. Mm -hmm. You wish to speak with me? Yes. My work in the North remains unfinished. My plan now is to reach the North Magnetic Pole and the North Pole itself as soon as possible. I have the honor to make an important request of you. Proceed. I ask that you let me have the Fram, because without her, Dr. Nansen, I doubt the work can be done. Yes, Nansen here. Yes. Really? Well, tomorrow, please. Yes. Thank you. When you ask for a man's dreams, Captain Amundsen, you ask for everything. Your request forces a disclosure, which I must ask you to regard as a confidence. For the moment, I best serve our country here. But I have not as yet thrown off entirely the haunting idea that I might still have within me the resources of one last expedition of my own, surprising as it might seem. In point of fact, I have long cherished the dream of reaching the South Pole. But I'll make you a promise. Should the time come when that possibility is beyond me, I'll let you know, and you may ask again. Thank you. I am honored by your trust. Our man in Edinburgh tells me that Shackleton is on the point of declaring a bid for the South. So it's possible he'll spike my dream and deliver the Fram to you for the North. If your dream dies, I think it unlikely will be Shackleton's doing. Brave, though he may be. I've always found it unwise to underestimate the British. Why? Experience teaches them only one thing, that they are British and therefore preeminent. But nature is deaf to such things. She cannot hear the tunes of glory. Give my regards to your wife. Scott, I perfectly understand your reluctance to leave Portsmouth with your naval affairs in such a delicate state, but when you've heard my appalling news, I think you may feel that you have reason to reconsider the matter. The RGS has not only approved a bid by Shackleton for the South Pole, they've agreed to his using your old base at McMurdo Sound. It could be goodbye to all our daydreams. You see what I'm saying, Con? He's even asked your old scientific advisor, Bill Wilson, to accompany him. Wilson refused. He must be stopped, Con, at least from using McMurdo. You'll need a go-between. You only inflame him. Wilson is your man. Bind him to you. Happier for seeing you, dear friend. How are you, Bill? Grossly overworked and rather happy. 
But I'd say you've not arrived only hours after your telegram to talk about me. Now, what's all this about? Shackles, I shall need your help with it. He's simply taking his revenge on me for sending him home. Never mind that he was a liability. The work down there is ours, Bill. Mine and yours. The pole, too, if we want it. And if Shackleton takes the pole himself in the meanwhile? No. It's unthinkable. He hasn't the right. Isn't it rather out of one's hands now, Con? No. McMurdo's the only place he can possibly reach the pole from. Sovereign territory, Con. Mine, Bill. Mine. He'll listen to you, old friend. Keep them shut now. Nice and tight. Mr. Marsden. All right, you can look now. From Siberia. Don't you see? We know horses. Leave dogs to them as know them. With these little mutts, I shall see the pole, Billy boy. Thank you, Mr. Marsden. Well, Billy, I've been... Uh, a gog since I got your note. You better put me out of my misery. You changed your mind about coming. No, Shackle, I haven't. Well, that's a shame. What can I do for you? I've been asked to speak with you. What about? By whom? Could we walk, do you think? I have some interviews for crew at Waterloo Place. Uh, be over. Let us have one thing clear between us. If indeed Scott has plans, they were at no time made known to me. There can therefore be no question of my withdrawal. To suggest otherwise impugns my honor and integrity. Agreed. Equally, I would ask you to accept without qualification Scott's word on the prior existence of his own intentions. There is more, I suppose. No success, Shackles. Not even the pole itself could morally justify for stalling Scott's prior claim to the use of that base. Well, certainly the guilt would be off the gingerbread. Dogs my days, this little careerist, this mediocrity. Man, I will not call him. He's too small, too mean. He will not rest until I am dead and my mouth stopped. He nearly killed the two of us out on the barrier, Bill, with his antics. And home he comes to take the glory and to write me into history as a burdensome liability to the Enterprise. My God, Billy, we all had scurvy. You're a doctor, you know that. I have said in public only enough to clear my name of this vile, self-serving slander and earned his undying hatred. I will not sign to this. This virtually guarantees I shall not reach the goal of the expedition. This he must not, he cannot do. Shall I say it for you, Bill? If I refuse to sign, he will have no recourse but to put the facts before the public, etc., etc. The scandal scares off my backers, and the expedition evaporates. Oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. These are scoundrel days when honest men have to do the work of blackguards. I pray you have sound reason, Bill. I do. I do.
Dear Captain Scott, I undertake to leave the McMurdo Sound base to you and land either at the place known as the Barrier Inlet or at King Edward VII land, whichever is the most suitable. I will not work to the westward of the 170th Meridian West and shall not make any sledge journeys going west. I hope this letter meets you on the points you desire. Ernest Shackleton. <laughs>